Well, hi, it's Jerry with I Love RV Life. It's a beautiful day here in Daytona Beach. And today I thought I would, let's do something a little different. Instead of running down to the beach and it's spring break time, let's look at some fun things that you can do without spending a whole lot of money. Well, hi, it's Jerry. I'm catching the early morning sun. We're back in Daytona Beach. We come down here a couple times a year to see family. And uh, today I thought, well, it's the height of spring break. Uh, what could we do as a family? It was, it's been a little cool, uh, just a little bit too chilly to go out on the beach. And what are those things that we can do to go outside, uh, get some fresh air, maybe see something a little bit off the beaten path that we might not typically do. And again, kind of working within a budget. So come along today. I've got a couple little stops that I'm gonna make here. Then our son Joel is gonna come pick up me and Joan. And I think we may go up to St. Augustine for an early lunch and then maybe just kick around the old area. And depending on how things going and how full we are, we may come back home and maybe fix a little something to eat. Mmm, I got the Montana grill out. I've got kind of something kind of neat planned. Joan's going to stay here for the first part of the morning, but you'll see her this afternoon. Come along, let's go have some fun. Over the past year, you've probably realized by now that uh, Joan and I are huge fans of Brooklyn bedding, and we're not the only ones who are fans. We get comments on our YouTube channel and we get emails from ilovervlife.com weekly of people who have purchased Brooklyn bedding and go, it's made a difference. Uh, when we got our first fifth wheel, it was a gateway and the mattress was horrible. So we tried this foam and another type of foam and a memory foam and combinations of each. And then we got the gel topper which was an awful experience. It's like sleeping in jello. It was awful. Then we tried the pillow toppers and we would just try to add and take away. Could we make it better? We could not make it better. And probably if you were to add everything up when we finished, we could have bought us a Brooklyn bedding mattress from rvmattress.com. And we did. We got us a new mattress. Uh, and the fifth wheel we have now, we have the Signature Series. It's awesome and it gives us the best night's sleep. The comfort is just amazing, so much so that we got this, the Aurora for our home uh, because we would rather sleep in the RV than our mattress at home. So we wanted the experience in both locations. Doesn't matter if you're a back or side or stomach sleeper, they've got a comfort level and a size for your specific RV, even those odd cuts. Uh, they've got a sizing chart that you can specify what you need. You're not sure, they got a chat function on the website. You can talk to the folks there and they'll give you great guidance as they did me. Uh, even more so, a 120 night sleep trial. That just shows you not just a quality of mattress, but a quality of company who believes in their product. 10 year warranty on the product, that's fantastic. Free shipping made in the US and it comes to your doorstep. Here you go, you just get it in a box. You lay it on top of your platform, take it out of the box, take it out of the plastic. Within minutes, these mattresses go to full size, they're ready to sleep on that night. No off-gassing, it's just a great mattress. Well, I would like to thank Brooklyn Bedding at RVMattress.com for sponsoring today's video. If you're interested in getting a Brooklyn Bedding mattress for your RV, it's very, very simple. Just go to RVMattress.com slash I Love RV Life. And then when you get ready to check out, use the code I Love RV Life and get 25% off your purchase. It's just absolutely a great way to be able to get a mattress and find one that fits your budget. First stop in today's tour is going to be the Marine Science Center here at Potts Inlet. Let's, uh, let's go inside here. I think this is going to be interesting. And you know what? We might even get to pet a stingray. I think that's going to be fun. So fortunately, I'm here with Shell, and she's going to give us some highlights about this incredible, incredible place to go. Again, not everything is the beach. There's these little hidden gems. This is a hidden gem. Shell, tell me a little bit about, about the center and why it's here. And yeah, hey, Jerry. Um, you're at the Marine Science Center. We're located at Ponce Inlet, right next to the lighthouse. And we are a bird and turtle hospital. So this is a hospital for wild animals. These are not pets. We've been open since 2002, and we've helped over 26,000 reptiles and over 19,000 birds since we've been open. So 
It's really an amazing place. Our main goal is to try and release uh, turtles like these here. These are uh, juvenile green sea turtles. They're at that stage of their life where maybe they're about two to 10 years old. They come in and they have some illness or injury or they've ingested trash and they just need a little bit of human assistance to get better and get back out into the ocean. Those turtles are gonna get to be about three or 400 pounds when they're wow. fully grown. Wow, and these are all rescues? These are all rescues. We also have our gallery where we focused on the ecosystems of Florida. So all of the exhibits uh, represent a specific ecosystem like the estuary where the baby fish are born. And uh, a lot of people don't realize that we get about 60% of our commercially fished fish from an estuary, which is amazing. So um, this is why it's very important to, you know, look at your fertilizer use, plant natives, because then you don't need as much. We're having a big issue with uh, manatees in the last few years mm. where there was no seagrasses and they were starving. So everybody can do the part because water is all connected. So when you're thinking about, you know, what are you doing in your neighborhood? If you plant some native trees and maybe, you know, raise the mower blade of your um, mower because then your grass is a lot healthier and you don't need as much fertilizer. So, you know, we, we're trying to teach on e every ecosystem that we have in the gallery. So we have the, uh, the touch tank with the stingrays and the sharks and we wanted to be able to have that interaction where, where the guests can touch an animal and realize, oh, I've just touched a shark. They're not like the, you know, crazy scary thing that we thought they were but they're part of the ecosystem part of the food chain and they're very important um, so we wanted to do that get people to love this environment like we do we love it here at the Marine Science Center in Volusia County is amazing and uh, want to then learn things that they can do call to action when they leave here and, and they can do things that they can you know use their own reusable water bottle and say no to plastic bags don't release balloons <laughs> good heavens you know cut the so, strips for the from yeah. the six packs of soft exactly, drinks so exactly. that they don't get tangled yeah. in that so important yeah so what other types of series species would we see here when we visit aside from the turtles and the stingray and the and the sharks what would else would we see so here? we have a bird hospital as well and um, on our bird boardwalk these are our permanent residents actually Laura is in the in the classroom she's doing a presentation with one of our Cooper tops with one of the raptors razzle which is pretty amazing so we have a lot of animals that we can do uh, education programs with you know this is the, the snake, this is Tobias, and then this one here is the uh, owl, you know. This is how much we love our job here Absolutely. at the Science Center. We have the animals tattooed on us, but um, yeah, so it's it's a great place. I've, I've been with the county for 15 years, and I just enjoy coming to work every day. It's a joy. And meeting people like you who are doing wonderful things for educating others. Well, thank um, we, you. we thank you for what you do. Thank you. Well, it, it is a treasure to be able to find the work that you're doing here. And again, uh, being able just to share some of the fun things to do when you come to the beach. So when you come to Daytona, go see the lighthouse, come see here, it'll be it'll be a day of wonder. So make sure you take care Definitely. of that. All right, show you later. Thank you. <laughs> so there's a lot of things to do here in the Science Center, a lot of fun. This is peak spring break time. There are tons of people. Uh, it's a little afternoon. They said it already had seven people come through. Um, there's touchy-feely areas. We'll do some of that for those who are into it. I'm going to be really careful here. There's lots of kids, so bear with me as I try to get all this in film. We can touch. If they'll let us, we can touch. And they'll, and they'll, they'll come to the end. If they decide it's the right Oh, look at that. Look at that. Let's see if we can touch a stingray here. Look at this. I'm not sure. There we go. <laughs> uh, are they very social? Or is this just, they're just used to being around people? These were all in boarding captivity or in captivity very shortly after that. So all they really ever known is people. It's people. And we hand feed them three times. Oh, uh, okay. They're looking for something to chew on, huh? Oh, that was fun. Look at that. So you can kind of come here and get all the hand feeding. Let's see if I can get another one. Let's see if I can get another one to come up here to me. Here comes one right here now. Let's see if they'll come up close. No, he's not going to do it. <laughs> That's fun. That's really fun. 
So you're wondering, there's just these little pools of things all over the place. And can you see the, can you see the turtle stretching its neck out into the sun, getting some sun over there? Those are not, there you, there you, there you can see a foot moving in a little stretch. These are not ornaments, they're the real deal. And there's some down here in the water as well. And they strongly encourage you not to stick, there you go, there's one coming up. Not to stick your finger in the water, because you'll probably get nibbled on, or maybe even lose the tip. So, uh, lots of fun things to see. Here you see lionfish. Look at these, aren't these gorgeous? Look at this beautiful species. These are just some of the things that we get to be able to see here. Look at this. Just beautiful. Beautiful lionfish. Look at that. So there are fewer aquariums around here that you can see certain types of sea life. All right, I understand they're gonna have a raptor display over here and they're gonna have somebody talking about some of the birds that they bring in. We'll go over here to the Bird Sanctuary Center. They, these is, this is not a place where you're going to like a zoo. These are all rescues, so they're taking them in for some reason, they're either been harmed uh, and they're gonna to try to get them back out into flight again if they can, or there's those that are just, you know, something has happened to them and they're gonna take care of them. It's just such a such a noble effort these folks are doing here. So let's go over to the, see what they're talking about raptors. I think that'll be fun. All right, this is Razzle. Everybody say hi, Razzle. Hi, Razzle. Hi, Razzle. And Razzle is a raptor that's gonna be here today. Say hi, Razzle. Of raptors or birds of prey and I think uh, I can't fool anybody this is not an owl <laughs> but what kind of bird is it anybody want to guess uh, yes. uh, oh you were so, <laughs> so close you were so close oh, go the other way yes <laughs> and the thing about sharpies as we call them in the trade the shark shin pox of course they are quite a bit smaller than these guys. It doesn't seem like it, but, but they are. And there's a little bit, you know the, you know the difference in the coloration. I didn't let you have a good view, oh, so there you go. Now you know. And, and plus, of course, Razzle. Oh, why is Razzle with us? As I said, only the ones that can't be set free. Take a look at this right wing. You'll see some little bit of feather sticking out. The wing doesn't quite sit against the side of the bird the same. I guess a little hard, it's the wrong angle. I can hold you this way. Go. Ah, you can see it. Grazzle broke that wing in three places. Did it, and this is when we get many of our birds, when they're at that fledgling age. So this is where they're not just fluffy, they've got feathers, they're flapping their wings, they're getting out their strength, they're getting ready to fly, they're starting to fly, and some of them, we never, you know, see what happens, and it rarely gets seen, but it does happen, and probably they take a tumble. Well, that was fun. We just left the Science Center back here, and we're gonna go over here to the Bird Sanctuary and uh, just see what they have in store. Again, this is not a zoo. These are all rescues, so this will be fun to see this. This is the Mary Keller Seabird Rehabilitation Sanctuary. Let's uh, just go through here and see what we can find. So they have a little room to exercise here. Not much. Again, some of these will end up being permanent residents. I don't know which ones are which. You can see that one's got a damaged wing. And then others are gonna try to get them back out if they can get them healthy enough. Here we have some pelicans down in there. <laughs> a number of different birds here. Look at that handsome fella. A red shouldered hawk. Look at that. That is one handsome fella. I think he's about as interested in us as we are of him. He may be just a little hard to make out, but can you see him? 
a horned owl. There he is. <laughs> He's just kind of taking it easy back there. Look at this fella here, a red-tailed hawk. Now we have those back home in, in Georgia. I see those from time to time. Just look at this guy, he is. Never seen one up this close. I would say he's probably a good, uh, maybe 18 inches tall. He is quite, quite the hunter. Look at that. A pretty fella. That is neat. Um, these little slops are very, very inexpensive. That's a great place to bring the family or if you're just by yourself or just a just the couple wants to come and kind of get away and see some fun things down here at the greater i'll call it the greater daytona area now this is ponce inlet so make sure you take advantage of doing this let's uh let's see what else we can find in the area what a fun day i'm at the veterans museum and education center this is a very very interesting place let's go inside and let me show it to you today i'm at the veterans museum and education center right in daytona now this is this is almost off the main area it's right off of international um, this is a great display for those of us who have served as well as those of us who are interested in all the contributions that so many have made to uh, our military in this country um, and they cover a very very wide range let's just give you just a few minutes here just showing you the highlights look i hope you get a chance to come here this really is a great display so you have everything from here's a medal of honor recipients so of course alvin york and this something and we go here we start in the korean war it's just a really really nice display of various pieces of information they refer to it as the forgotten war Forgotten war. lots of korea this really is a great display everything just just to kind of give you a highlight of what you might want to see here from you know great pieces of information that you can sit here and read you know the various new newspapers that covered korea and then of course all your patches from that period even have some armament here the good tommy the great m1 grand and the carbine as well lots of great photos really a neat 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 place then we start crossing over into vietnam era i went in right as vietnam was ending and uh, just tons of look at all this memorabilia over here from vietnam isn't this great just pictures and so many personal items that that people have shared it's, it's great great stories of all the companies that served during that period and then all the patches look at all these patches from the period Isn't that great we've got uh a tribute to the eighth air force here from world war ii and then just all the various uniforms from current to past look at this just uniform after uniform that you can look at that just the cases are just full of just great memorabilia look at all this and of course the the cases here with all the information all the various military equipment now i never parachute but <laughs> look at that and that's something military payment certificates look at that wow what a collection isn't that incredible look at all this we even have some pieces here from the revolutionary war mostly pictures a good story here look at that george washington's flintlock pistol oh my goodness and you can just go through and see they have everything from military helmets from various times i don't even want to know the history of that one can you see it can you see the bullet hole that came through it yeah 
And then we've got uh, Gulf Wars. A lot of pictures and information about, as we call it, the Persian Gulf of 1990. You can see all that. Desert Shield. I remember when that happened. Metals and patches from Iraq. Information from Afghanistan, look at that. Then an area dedicated to women in the military from medals to pictures and stories and timelines, really nice. Great contribution. And of course the Coast Guard and the contribution they've made for not just protecting our shores, but a lot of people don't realize the contribution the Coast Guard made during our military conflicts as well. United States Merchant Marine. It's just a great display of information. World War II Japanese war relics. Would you look at this? I remember my father coming back from World War II sharing that they just threw hundreds of cases of Japanese rifles into the ocean. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah, a lot of U.S. goods as well. I know, look at this. The challenges of the racial struggle during military, thank goodness that's past. Look at all the battleships named after Florida. Look at that from sailing ships to submarines. How about that? Really a great display of, oh, World War I and World War II memorabilia. Uh, somewhere, the 30 caliber. Enfield is in there. Look at this. German Some German memorabilia here as well. Oh my, look at this. An authentic recreation of the Golden Eagle Bayonet Dagger. That's authentic. Look at that. The German Luger. All right. And then you've seen the videos where I've been into submarines before. And uh, those are heroes that get in those little small things to do what needs to be done. And of military arms, look, look what we have here. Everything from, oh, look at this, Revolutionary War flintlock. Look, look at that, flintlock rifle. Oh, we've even got a, a cap musket from uh, the Civil War. Yeah. Remington rolling blocks, yeah. trap doors. Again, the Great Garand, the 303 Springfield, look at that. And then the M16, oh, there's the 14 back there behind that. There's a 30 caliber carbine, look at that. And then flintlock pistols, what we have here. Look at that, Colts from the turn of the century. That would be 18 to 1900. And then you've got to appreciate the this Korean Memorial Thompson, machine gun. Thompson here. Look at that. And then the old, we call these the grease guns, the M3 sub. I fired one of those. <laughs> well, I know that is a quick tour of the Veterans Museum and Education Center. Look, it's a great display here. Don't just take the video for seeing this really quick walk around here. There's just some great information from uniforms to weapons to just tons and tons of history that they've that has been uh, contributed here from so many. It's, a, it's really a fun place to come. So look forward to seeing you at the next one. Well, we decided that we would come down to Old St. Augustine. We haven't been here, Joan, in Two years, three or four right? years. I think 2020 was the last time we were here. Okay, it was full blown COVID back then. And uh, we decided we'd hang out with this guy. And we picked up Joel along the way. Or maybe he picked Actually, us up along the way. <laughs> so we're looking for something to eat here in Old Town and maybe a beverage. And it is full-blown spring break. We, again, we hadn't been to St. Augustine in a long time. Fun to come back here. So we're going to hang out with the crowd. It is a crowd. Oh, the popcorn smells good. Everything smells good right now when you're hungry. <laughs>
there is an absolute mass of people down here. I had no idea spring break would be this crazy. I didn't think it'd be that busy down here. It is absolutely. It makes sense. It is crazy. We're going to go down. We're hoping. We're hoping that our favorite little Greek restaurant still exists. Uh, we don't know what has been COVID impact or not, but we're going to see. Fingers crossed. And you can just see all this. Look. Look at all this. Oh, my gosh. And there is, of course, a little bit of everything down here. That really cool restaurant, did it go away? Um, there it is. Prohibition Kitchen. There it is. Keep that in mind if this isn't open. Okay. So we're here at Athena. We have been coming here. We were talking about earlier. What we've been coming here for maybe something like what twenty years? Oh like yeah, that? for sure. He's easily twenty years, uh, maybe even longer since that guy right there was just a little guy. And uh, it's just hard to come to St. Augustine without coming to Athena. I would show you all the food, but well, here's what it looks like now. I mean, we had euros, and Jim's got stuffed chicken with spinach, and uh, it's just. It's just incredible. Yeah, all the all, all the great vegetables you had there. So it's just it's just one of those places that I don't know. We've just always been attracted to. Mm -hmm. It's just a it's just oh, a fun good, place. Good, good Greek food. So if you like Greek food, you like the moussakas and the pasticios and just a good gyro. It's just some kind of yummy. Uh, there's the old church right there at the end of the historic area. If you haven't been there, and real famous. I think you can go in there for tours. Uh, there's the Athena restaurant and of course there's the famous Lion Bridge that they decorate up so pretty during Christmas and the big the big 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 marinas over there and then this is the little the little park. Beautiful beautiful place. Uh, A1A L House is over there. That's always good to go eat. It's a fun place to go. Just a really, really, really neat, neat town. Yeah. Joan, are you uh, thinking about something sweet to eat? Always. Fudge? No. Ice cream? No. Cotton candy? Find one of those, find one, just find one of those candy shops and find what, with all the different things they have. Yeah, there's candy stores. Yeah, there you go. All right, so we're going to look for a candy store. It used to be called Penny Candy, now it's Dime a Piece. All right, let's see what we can find. This is what we're not going to be doing today. Nope. No, we don't do snakes. I don't think so. No snakes. We're a snake-free family. Look at the incredible fudge. Then you got fudge. And then... Look at that chocolate, chocolate really Enos wow. walnut, that wow. roasted toasted coconut. If you want some fudge, here's some fudge. Turtle. Oh my gosh! Look at all this stuff. Oh man. Oh my gosh! Look at that stuff. All right, here we go. We're gonna try. We're gonna try smoking reaper. Let's see what happens. I don't know why I'm doing this. All right, here we go. Smoke and Reaper. Let's see. All right, Smoke and Reaper. Smoke and Reaper. Oh, you mean I get to do this twice? Oh. Okay, I made a mistake. I hit the Voodoo Reaper, not the Smoke and Reaper. Oh gosh. Mm. Ooh. That's hot as that's hot as crap, but that's good. That is good. Golly Moses, that's hot. Oh. Alright, we're doing one of my favorite things. I am grilling out tonight. Ooh, it's gonna be some kind of yummy. And yes, I know, I'm in Daytona. And I got a jacket on. It's cold. It is, uh, okay, you folks up north, bless your heart. <laughs> I know you're in feet of snow, and I'm whining about 60 degrees and a breeze, and the sun shining, and <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. 
I'm sorry, but I'll show you what we're fixing tonight. It is, it's some kind of yummy. All right, we got our Monument Grill, which we love. We love this thing. This is a um, yellow squash, and uh, we just, you know, put a little olive oil on it, and then I put a, uh, like a Montreal seasoning on it. Yeah, just a little sprinkle. And uh, we're having salmon tonight. Yes, I sear it on both sides, and I put a glaze. Uh, I've got this glaze that I make. I use, um, here, I'll put a little bit on here just to kind of keep this moist. It's gonna be good. I make it with a katsu sauce uh, that you can just get anywhere. Um, I think it's like the Kikkoman brand or something like that. So I put about three large tablespoons of that. And then I like to use clover honey. I don't use any kind of a weird honey, just a plain old clover honey. And then about a teaspoon of sesame oil. Teaspoon of sesame oil. And let me tell you, this is some kind of good. I'll tell you how good it is. You can take a piece of that salmon. You ready for this? You can take a little piece of it and put it right here on your forehead and your tongue will beat your eyebrows off trying to get to it. <laughs> Don't get any better than that. Mm -hmm.